Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be looking at our chapter 9 practice test and we're looking at ways to analyze a lot of the sequences that we're going to be seeing. So for question 1 we have the sequence 1, 1.5, 2.5, 2.25, and 3.375. One thing you might try here is to see if the pattern to get from one number to the next is an addition pattern. And as we can see the addition pattern doesn't really work, you know, to get from the first number to the second number, you have to add 0.5. To get from the second number to the third number, you have to add 0.75. So that kind of breaks a pattern already. Although if you look at the differences here, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1.125, there is a pattern there. So you're not completely off track here. But look how much cleaner this is if you decide to use the multiplication rule. Uh, if you use a multiplication pattern to get from every member of the set to the next member of the, I guess I should say, sequence, uh, you're always just multiplying by 1.5. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a really clean way to get from one member of the sequence to the next member of the sequence. The rule to get from one member of this sequence to the next is multiplication. So that implies that we have a geometric sequence. We'll need to know that the first term is 1 and the geometric ratio is 1.5. The recursive rule for a geometric sequence, uh, which is basically part A, you have to write down what is the first term. So I know the first term is 1. So I'll put a 1 there. And then for the recursive part here, we're going to figure out or write down the first term, which was 1, and multiply that by the ratio, 1.5. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a mistake. That's a n minus 1 and a n. So any term is equal to the previous term multiplied by 1.5. Now you might be tempted like I was to put a number here for a n minus 1, but that's not what you're doing. You're kind of making the, the formula based on the previous term. For every geometric sequence, the explicit formula would be the first term multiplied by the ratio to the n minus 1 power. So we're going to just start substituting things here. We know the first term a1, that's just 1. And we know the ratio is 1.5. So we'll put a 1.5 here. Sometimes you might see this set up apart by parentheses, either maybe like this, or maybe like this. And that's our explicit formula. You might want to do some algebra, algebraic simplification here at this point, but then that is just algebra, and I can leave you to that. Part C says to find the ninth term, and the easiest way to get the ninth term is to just use the explicit formula. So let's use the explicit formula here. You've got 1 multiplied by 1.5 to the 9 minus 1 power, which is... 1.5 to the eighth power, and that evaluates to 25.62890. For letter D, we're supposed to use the explicit rule to see if the sequence converges. So we're going to take the limit of the general term as n approaches infinity. And you might want to simplify this as 3 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. With an exponential function like this, since the base of the numerator is greater than the base of the denominator, this limit actually goes to infinity. And you can just think about this as the numerator is growing faster than the denominator. So of course, we're just going to approach infinity. Since the sequence doesn't have a limit, then we say that the sequence diverges. And since that sequence also diverges, we say that um, there is no limit. We're going to do the same thing with a new sequence, uh, 15, 13, 11, and 9. 
we notice that the rule to get from one term to the next is going to be subtract 2, or maybe you want to think about this as add negative 2. Since the rule is addition, this is an arithmetic sequence where b1 equals 15 and d equals negative 2. Here are the two components to the recursive rule for an arithmetic sequence. So we just need to fill in our blanks. So b1 is definitely 15. And the nth term is equal to the n minus 1th term plus n minus 1 multiplied by my difference, which is negative 2. The explicit rule for an arithmetic sequence is b1 equals sorry, bn equals b1 plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. And we'll just fill in the blanks here. b1 is 15 plus n minus 1 and d is negative 2, which you can definitely algebraically simplify to bn equals 17 minus 2n. Part C is to find the ninth term. And we could definitely just use the explicit formula, 17 minus 2 times 9, for a ninth term of negative 1. For part d, we want to find the limit as n approaches infinity of the general term, or the um, explicit formula. So as n approaches infinity, what happens with 17 minus 2n? Well, that also approaches negative infinity, because the terms just keep decreasing and decreasing. So the, uh, the sequence diverges, and there is no limit as n approaches infinity. And we're going to finish up this video with number 3. We know that the second and fifth term of a geometric sequence are 1 half and negative 32. So we're supposed to find the sixth term, the common ratio, an explicit rule, and a recursive rule. And the trick here really is to kind of actually find the recurse, the explicit rule first. We're going to find that explicit rule. We know a2 is equal to 1 half. And the explicit rule tells us that for a geometric sequence, that's going to be equal to a1 multiplied by r to the 2 minus 1. And we also get that negative 32 is equal to a1 multiplied by r to the 3 minus 1 power. Putting those clues together, we have a1 r squared equals negative 32. a1 r is equal to 1 half. And my favorite way to solve this is just to make a ratio of those two quantities. So we have a1 r squared over a1 r is equal to negative 32 over 1 half. And actually, I'm seeing my mistake here, a mistake here. This is a fifth term. So that needs to be a 5 here and here. OK, so that means that r cubed is going to be equal to negative 64. And we just need a cube root of negative 64. Luckily, we know that's negative 4. So we have our value of r. That's an incredibly important quantity. Now we're going to try to find our value of a1. And to do that, we're just going to use any of the two equations that we already have. I think the easiest one is to use a1r equals 1 half. And of course, now we know that r is equal to negative 4. And so a1 equals negative 1 eighth. That's also an incredibly important quantity. So with a1 and r, we can answer questions c and d immediately, because c says the explicit rule. And as we know, the explicit rule is just equal to a1 multiplied by r to the n minus 1 power. So a1 is 1 eighth negative, And then r is negative 4 to the n minus 1. That's my letter c. Letter D is a recursive rule. So the recursive rule, like we saw earlier, is a1 equals negative 1 eighth. And a n is a n minus 1 multiplied by the ratio of negative 4. So remember, again, common mistake here. For the recursive rule, you have to have both components. Otherwise, it's incorrect. 
And I also see that we answered letter B, the common ratio. So we can just write that in here now. B, the ratio, R is equal to negative 4. Which means that all we need to answer is letter A. What is the sixth term? Well, if a n equals negative 1 eighth multiplied by negative 4 to the n minus 1, then a 6 is negative 1 eighth multiplied by negative 4 to the fifth power. And that's just 128. So that's it for this video. We'll see you next time when we start looking at questions 4 through, I think we're going to do 4 through 7. So see you at the next one.